We didn't have these dig down things back in my day. What's up, y'all? In the Quickset Titan video a couple of days ago, I introduced a tool that I had previously not mentioned before, and that is the plug spinner. So this video is going to be about picking locks and spinning plugs. Picking and spinning, picking and spinning. In the Quickset Titan video we did a couple of days ago, I introduced a tool in that video with no prior warning. Jason, what in the heck is that thing? And as I mentioned in that video, we are going to be doing a video on just plug spinning and picking and spinning and picking and... Okay, okay. Oh. So with some locks, yes, you do have to pick them to take them apart, but more than likely, this is going to be a situation where you're called out to actually open a house or a door where somebody has lost the key for it. And as you can see, this plug is already picked. Go ahead and talk about picks. I'm not going to teach you how to use picks. You can figure that out on your own. When I learned this dang trick, I didn't have no YouTube to go to. My mentor gave me this and said it's a rake and then said that's a hook and that's a diamond. And you only need the diamond if you're picking them curved keyways like for them Y1. This thing is what turns the plug and you stick it in the bottom of the plug just like that. Just, just, just like, uh, just like. Six and a half hours later. Just like that, and then you take your rake and you just wiggle it in and out and push on this and then eventually it'll work and, and hopefully you can get it open. So there you go. Figure it out yourself. Of course, nowadays we do have things like lishies. Didn't have no fancy lashy, whatever you call this thing. We didn't have none of that nonsense back in the day. We just picked locks the hard way. If you have it picked now, I'm gonna turn this and it's actually to the unlocked position, but if you had to pick it, if it picked easier the other way, you have to get it to go past and go to the other side, and that's where we introduce the plug spinner. Uh, now, this is not my favorite one. HKS sent me this one a while back when I mentioned that I couldn't get it anymore. Uh, this is a, I think this is an old writing. It looks just like an old writing, but now they have like plastic doodads here. This guy is about 30 years old and the blade has only been changed once, which was actually pretty recently by me a few months back. Uh, this is my favorite one. However, it is getting a little slippy nowadays. Figures wouldn't slip when I said it was getting slippy. Uh, so this guy I've been kind of practicing with a little bit. And I think my mistake was I was not turning it tight enough. Uh, so basically you can do this right without a plug spinner. You can, uh, and the theory behind this is what you're doing is you're making that plug spin fast enough so that those pins and springs that are in the Bible don't drop down. At this moment, they're pressing down. They're ready to recapture that plug when it turns back. So if it's not, fast enough you have a spin fail and that like typically you have spin fails when it takes a really long time to pick a lock that's just kind of murphy's law for locksmithing so there is one way to do it. there there over the years there's been many different methods and such that people have used to spin locks and rubber bands and all that uh but you can you know it's you you typically you'll lose a lot of of, of uh turning tools doing this and you can really sometimes do it. I, I suggest wearing uh, safety goggles for this. Let me go get my safety goggles. The problem with this is your, your wrench just goes flying. So when you're spinning, no matter whether you're doing it this way or you're actually using a tool, you don't want the plug too far that way and you don't want it too close. Number one, if it's too close, it won't build up enough momentum to spin past that and you'll have a fail. If it's too far this way, you really need a lot of tension on your tool and what'll happen is it'll lose momentum once you hit that shear line, the 12 o'clock area. So typically what I'll do is I'll have it about halfway between the two. If the stop is at nine o'clock and the, the Bible's at 12, I'll put it at about, nine, about 10 o'clock right there. And yes, this can be done. It didn't happen that time. Fingers crossed. Look at that. So the theory with the plug spinner is if we were trying to spin it that way, we're gonna have to twist this way so that when you let it go, when you push the button, 
it goes that way. So what we're gonna do here, and and this, you know, the first twist, that's that's nothing. That's nothing. That is not gonna do anything. It's got to have a good bit of force, and I've discovered that uh, even at that setting, it is not that great. Now, one thing I do to all my tips, just the tip, is I put this bevel on it. When you're putting the plug spinner in there, you don't want it at the bottom of the keyway. You can't usually put it at the top because the pins are in the way. So almost always, you kind of need it right in the middle to get that good, it's physics, but basically, if it's in the middle of the keyway, that'll give you the best chance of a spin because otherwise if it's down here at the bottom it's spinning and it'll drag on this and and cause it a fail cause a fail and you don't want that so having this uh filing a little chamfer on there act makes it act like a key if these pins are really long it's sometimes hard to get it in there you want the plug spinner all the way in for sure every time uh, but you don't want to put a lot of pressure you don't want a lot of front pressure on this you kind of want it just in there and then on this one you kind of have to hold this area we're going to put it at about 10 o'clock and push so that did not have enough power to spin it so now we're going to repick it <laughs> if you do by chance have a lishy a lot of us are buying these because you know some of us aren't great at picking and this thing does make it much easier but if you this didn't sometimes this just doesn't work y'all in fact it, when i got it it used to be my first go-to now it's now i'm back to to, to to raking and weirdly enough i've been using the diamond a whole a whole lot i don't know why but one good thing to do at this moment even if you got it picked with athalishi is read the cuts on it because if you're going to turn around and have to re it it's much easier to know what the cuts are on the lock. And on this particular one, uh, with the Lishy, again, I'm not really teaching you how to do this, but this one is, uh, looks like two, make sure it's all the way in there. Okay, so two, five, one. That five and one makes these hard to pick. Uh, three and four. So now that we know the bidding, we can pretty easily lishy it again. A lot easier than not knowing, you know, you know, you know, you know. All right, so we're gonna try this. There's, there's that point. There's that point. I don't feel comfortable that being that strong, but I guess that's what this thing's made for. Get it in there centered and let's move it right about there to about 10.45. See, I'm not real fond of this guy. I don't know why, I don't know, I guess I'm not used to it yet, but once again, we've got a spin fail, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you switch to my other guy here. My tried and true and faithful. It's got a much stronger spring, seems like. Uh, but this one, I do have to be a little bit careful that I don't let it go. I like this one because it actually, it actually works almost always. So anyway, that is it. Spinning, and, and now we're locked. So anyway, that's it. Spinning the, the, uh, the lock to make it go the other way. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to do that. Here we go, plug spinning, basics. From that point, just watch YouTube videos, right? Because that's how you do things now. And have them dang dong video. Okay.